Hi, good afternoon. Thanks to Dan and the whole Hypothesis team for organizing this and bringing me here. I'm going to speak about the text annotation uh, tool, uh, software, and called Comen. And I'm going to start a live demo with all the rigs that are implied. So assume I'm a professor of English literature, which I'm not. Uh, and and uh, I want to enable an, a, a collaborative annotation work by, by students uh, and on uh, a book by Virginia Woolf. And so the, we are lucky because Jacob's Room was published in 1922 and it's in the public domain in the United States. So I'm not going to bring, put hypothesis in jail for this. So. Uh, I skip the part about opening uh, a, a comment workspace that takes about five minutes and I don't have them. So basically I assume I have one, which is our demo workspace. All I have to do is to copy the HTML version of the text within, uh, uh, from, from Wikisource in that case. I, I have pre-filled uh, the uh, the title and tags, uh, but all I have to do is to paste it here and and to save it. And not, normally it should fail at this time, but it doesn't. Uh, and that's it. You have with comment. You have a text that can be annotated. But not just that can be annotated, but you can, where you can manage users, you can invite them to annotate it privately or not with various roles of that. And the annotation is a classical, uh, I mean, I'm not even going to, to show it to you, but it's, it's, a, it's a classical uh, highlighting an, uh, uh, interface. Now, what do people do with this? I'm going to show you rapidly a few examples. First of all, uh, this is uh, a high school professor in Chicago called Joe Scottis, and we are immensely grateful to him because uh, with a few tens of other teachers in the US that are federated under a concept called text-centered teaching, he showed us that uh, and collaborative annotation was uh, essential to education, and that education was probably the main use domain uh, in which uh, it could be explored. So here we have work that has been conducted by several of these classes. There are, on the, on the prologue of the Canterbury Tales, there, there are, uh, which is about 30, a thousand characters. There are 527 uh, annotations or responses to annotation, and these uh, uh, and there is more text in the annotations. And I want to stress one thing: this, this guy, you know, Tim Cheerios, that's that's a student, <laughs> and these guys they write interesting stuff. So I think. What we heard this morning, that the problem was to get people to write interesting stuff. It, there is a known solution to that. And it's not just communities, it's communities of practice. When people are engaged in doing a project together, they write meaningful stuff. And when they write facing Chaucer, they write stuff that is not in short message language. They, they will write. So now this is only one type of application, but uh, as I said, we have a classical highlighting uh, interface, but we do believe we do, we do it better than most, uh, in particular in the scale of colors that we apply. But we, we have also other things. We have things like categorizing comments uh, or annotations uh, uh, according uh, to user-defined uh, categories that can be, uh, for example, in this case, you know, it can be references, it can be uh, uh, explaining the meaning or formal armates of necessary or whatever. Uh, uh, 
in people all use comment also as a collaborative writing tool. Partido X is a, a, an emanation of the movement of occupations in, in Spain, that is of a type of you occupy Wall Street, but there is a big difference with the Spanish movement is that they actually produce political platforms. And uh, they use comment not for the initial drafting, but to submit their, uh, their policy documents to comments by the public. A last example, uh, this is a member of parliament in France who crowdsources the drafting of a policy, uh, of a law proposal, a parliamentary law proposal uh, on network neutrality. Of course, it was a subject where you could get easily uh, collaborative contribution. Uh, here, what I'm showing you is comment is not just uh, a tool to upload text and make them annotated. It's also a, a full editing platform with uh, versioning and with version comparison. And what you see here is uh, one of the best uh, open source software component for doing version comparison. Uh, and uh, you can see that it's truly useful. It's useful to the point that some people think actually it should be the version comparison that should be the object of annotation even more than the resulting text. So I'm done with the uh, live, uh, live uh, all this is on the web. I mean, this is, I, I predefined it, but uh, uh, you can, you can uh, I mean, this, is, this works and you can go to this demo site and I will give a reference later. Now, how does this work? Uh, Uh, <coughs> basically, we did lot, lots of work on the annotation engine and interface. Uh, we do believe it matters because if it doesn't work, it kills the engagement of people. So we did a, a big effort to make it fit for large text and large set of comments. Fit means performant, uh, and uh, it's. Uh, I think we have made enormous progress, the two-thirds of that progress came from the low, Moore's Law and the, pro, uh, the progress in performance in browsers. Huh? But uh, one-third came from our, our own efforts. Our, our mission statement initially, uh, comment is derived from a tool that was called STEP, that was used for the, the revision of a general public license, when, one of the main licenses for, for open source software. And uh, this tool, basically, you had to work one, one day to make a text ready for annotation, and then people could annotate easily. And our idea was we want that to be symmetrical. We want anybody to be able to submit a text for annotation as easy and as fast as one can create an annotation. Now, uh, and basically, uh, we, it takes less than a minute to either upload a document or, or a, a web page. Uh, we have a variety of imports and, and exports. Now, as I said, comment managers, not just annotation, manages texts. Uh, uh, for example, our, our a comment workspace is what we sell as a web service, and it's also what our free software uh, offers. And with a comment workspace, you can uh, manage uh, and up to 500 texts and 500 registered users and an unlimited of anonym, uh, number of anonymous users. Uh, uh, this is actually this workspace is where lots of our work have, have been this, this back office of it. Uh, and all the, the features for configuration, for settings, for follow-up, for uh, dissemination. Now, the architecture is a relatively classical one. We have an Ajax client like all, all these, uh, the tools you see, you're seeing around. Uh, on the server side, we use the Django framework and its Python language uh, to manage uh, text annotation and user and uh, roles. Uh, and then database, we support various databases, but our reference databases is uh, Postgres. Uh, 
uh, now we also have an API that allows to to um, in, include comment functionality in content management systems and a Drupal client uh, for doing it in Drupal. And we also have a number of import export facilities, but basically this is much less that we would like to see. We would be to, would like to see uh, interoperability with uh, annotator, hyperstudio, hypothesis, uh, uh, peer library. Uh, we, we believe in a world of diversity in uh, an annotation e ecosystem that shares uh, the, the fact that it's based on open source software, that there are open formats for exports and imports, and that there are open APIs. Uh, our use cases uh, is, is about half and half, perfect. Uh, half and half collaborative writing, half and half annotation-centered work. Uh, I don't elaborate, you have already seen things. Uh, 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 it's, uh, uh, the fact that we are supporting both is sometimes drawing us into contradictory directions, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's very also uh, very helpful in terms of uh, engaging users. Finally, uh, we have run a business of, we, of a text annotation tool for six years now, uh, almost today. And uh, uh, so we, I think we have a unique experience in doing that. And there are very good news in the sense that uh, it's possible. Uh, we have a sustainable and scalable cost of operation. Uh, text annotation with a type of, of architecture can be easily distributed over, over sets of servers. It can be, uh, I mean, if we would get 1,000 more users, we know how to do it. Uh, but uh, uh, we have an excellent renewal rate, that is people we get as customers, they stay customers. But, uh, and we have users in more than 50 countries, actually in 120 countries, but in some cases it's so few users that's not meaningful. And we have uh, paying users uh, in, in 20 countries. Uh, and that includes countries like Japan, China, Chile, Brazil, uh, not just the European countries and the US and Canada. Uh, uh, but the bad news is we believe that we've, with around 10,000 users, we have reached, uh, we have reached about one uh, a, a very small share of our target users. And here I'm mentioning because we believe text annotation is a totally generic tool that is, uh, and the concept of wide usage, that would mean 100 million users, not, not the range where we are. Thank you. I hate to monopolize this, but this is a great talk. And after 12 talks where you seem to think that annotation was something you only did to already publish documents, it's nice to see someone talk about it in the context of collaborative authoring as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, let me make another observation. Is it fair to say that if annotation is something you do to a text that, that is going to be published, it seems like we're only looking at text will be published in online formats because if you want to do single source publishing to print as well as online, you need to have XML, not HTML. And I don't see anyone using HTML, XML as their native formats and annotation systems. Uh, I'm, let's say we do exports to a variety of formats, including XML formats. Uh, but uh, uh, actually, when we are, I did not mention it, but uh, we have underlying formats that are not XHTML. Uh, our, actually, our preferred format is like it was for editorially, uh, whom we, we dearly regret, uh, is uh, Markdown. Uh, actually, the Pondoc version of Markdown developed by John McFarlane in Berkeley. And uh, we, uh, so uh, we believe that indeed the future is in uh, structure, uh, structured text formats that are targeting publication 
on the web. And, uh, uh, but I'm not sure I answer your I guess question. The, the question is, how can we do rich semantic markup and things like that in an HTML format? It's just hard to do it well. It's much easier to do it in an XML representation. But it's, anyway, you know, it's, I don't, I'm not sure. This is HTML. Huh? Uh, uh, so it is, it is, in a way, it is uh, XML. Uh, why do we do it like that? Is to be able to operate in any browser, uh, and and that is, uh, I mean, I, I cannot uh, I cannot say anybody to anybody uh, I cannot say to myself I'm going to stop uh, uh, being operable in any browser. Thank you.